Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to dive in to the component that we used in the last video, and we're going to pick apart the code and sort of see what makes it work so that you can have a better understanding of what's going on behind the scenes with web components and Polymer. So check it out. Let's get started. So in the last video, we dropped in this Google map and we used a latitude and longitude and we came to our browser and uh, sure enough, we had a Google map. Now this is probably the easiest way to add and modify a map that we've ever had on the web, considering before you'd have to go to Google Maps or hit their API and grab some embed code. So this is just a really nice way of doing it. And for the complete list of properties and things like that that you can use, you can always come back to this Google uh, Map documentation page within the catalog. It shows you all of the different properties, what they expect and what they do. So like a zoom level, um, things like that. So now let's actually head to our browser. And before we go to Sublime Text where most of this video is going to be spent, I'm gonna inspect this element. I'm gonna open up HTML, open up the body, and you'll notice that we have this Google Map element here. What we can do is we can open it up. Now, when we open it up, you can see quite a bit in here. We have a Google Maps API element. So instantly you've seen not only a custom web component, but we've seen a component inside of a component, one that we didn't even know was there. And we have a div with a map. Um, we have another div, another div. Um, some of the stuff is hitting the Google API and it's what's giving us our actual map itself along with the controls here. So as you can see, this is where everything comes from within our new custom element. For instance, we have this Google logo here and it's positioned absolutely with the margin left and right. And uh, you can see that those positionings are what makes it show up. So this is very familiar. This is HTML like we've always seen it. However, it's just been imported using these custom web components. So cool. So now that we've seen what the sort of guts are of this inside of uh, our inspect element in Chrome, let's actually head to Sublime Text and check out what is going on here. So we're importing webcomponents.js, which is really what makes the whole of Polymer work. So we're not going to be diving into that. However, the Google map element itself is being imported simply by this uh, Google map.html. So let's come to our folder where we got this, which was Google map and then Google map.html. And so this is going to really tell you all you need to know about this element. You can see first we're bringing in Polymer, which is referenced from the path in our Bower components, this uh, Polymer folder here and Polymer.html. And then we're importing the Google APIs, Google Maps API.html. So it's another custom element that we're importing here. Then we're bringing in Iron Resizable Behavior, which is a custom Google element. In fact, you can find uh, that element on uh, Google's own listing if we come back to the catalog and go to Iron Elements. And um, you can see that iron resizable behavior is right here. The iron elements are a set of visual and non-visual utility elements. So just to give you some idea of what that's doing there. And then we have the Google map marker.html. Because we have this Google map marker being brought in, we can actually go ahead and use this Google map marker element as well in addition to our map. So let's head back to index.html and inside of this element, let's go ahead and um, add some space in here and let's use this Google map marker. So just like we had before, we can have a new element. Um, and except for this one, it's just hyphen marker. Close that off. And this needs to be closed out as well. And what we can do is we can give this now some latitude. I'm going to give it the exact same latitude and longitude as our map itself. Um, that way it's going to be just a point on the map. And we can say whether this is going to be draggable or not. We can give this a title. So we can say title, um, welcome to Denver here. Okay. So now that I've saved this, let's check out this Google map marker by refreshing our document. And as you can see, we now have this marker thrown on here. And when we hover over it, it gives us this welcome to Denver. So uh, that's just a little bit of what's going on here. 
um, simply by including another custom element, you're able to bundle elements within elements um, and then therefore make these components truly moldable and uh, modular in a really nice sort of ways. What's also great here is inside of the um, commented out code, it gives you examples. So it's showing you to give your Google Maps some sort of height, then some latitude and longitude values, then uh, it shows you using Google Map Marker. These values are for San Francisco. And if we come down here, it even gives you some examples of how to set uh, the variable attributes with JavaScript itself. So we can uh, use a document query selector on the Google map and then give it a longitude and latitude that way and give us an alert once the map is loaded. So we can even get an event listener once the map is ready. And again, we have one that gets uh, Google map directions. So this is just really super great. Now let's scroll down here a little bit and you'll see we have this DOM mod module and it has an ID of Google map. So the DOM module is really what's defining your component here. As you can see, its ID, Google Map, is what's going to be used when we actually use the component itself. Now if we scroll down, you can see it has some styles. So for instance, the host is getting a position relative display and block. Uh, the map ID itself is getting a position absolute, top, left, right, bottom, zero, sort of putting it in all four corners. And then that's the end of the styles. Now within the template code is what the actual HTML DOM stuff is going to be happening. So you'll notice that we have this Google Maps API element. And if we head back to our HTML, you remember when we open up this Google Map, the very first thing is this Google Maps API element. So as you can see, what's inside of template matches one-to-one -one with what's actually inside of our DOM here. Okay, so now in addition to that, we have this div ID with a map and we have this content ID marker, select Google map marker. And you'll notice below our ID uh, map, we have our Google map marker. Cool, so we're gonna dive into the specifics all of this quite a bit more once we start really building our own custom components. Now let's actually check out what's going on outside of the DOM module. Outside of the DOM module is a script tag where we then get to define some things. For instance, Polymer, we have is Google Map, which is defining our element. And then you can see we have some documentation letting you know exactly what's going on. For instance, uh, we have properties, which allows you to input a, an API key, client ID, and latitude, which you saw us using. So these properties map to the attributes here. So latitude was looking for a value, and that value is a number. So here we have latitude 39.73 is going to be overriding what they have as the default value, which is set via this value key. So we have notify and reflect to attribute, which we're gonna be going over a little bit more once we start writing some of this ourselves. And then we have map. And let's check out some more. We have libraries, which is looking for a string. And it gives you a place to check out a little bit more about the maps uh, libraries. Longitude, zoom level, audio, uh, auto tilt, it's looking for a Boolean. These are all the same properties you're going to find on Google's page here. Let's head back to Google Maps component. If you notice, we'll see all of those latitude, libraries, longitude, map, map, min zoom, max zoom, mouse events, no auto tilt. We're going to find all of those inside of this object here. So let's come down here. And as you can see, a lot of this is really just defining things that can be used in this element. Next, we have behaviors, which is where we added the other polymer behavior, the iron resizable behavior that we loaded up top. And we have listeners for iron resize, which has to do with the iron resizable behavior. And we have some other stuff, which obviously we're going to have to dive into a little bit more before we can fully explain. So let's scroll all the way down. And as you can see, we have various functions that are going to be defining the characteristics and the abilities of this particular element. For instance, this resize. So this is going to be making sure the map resizes correctly with the longitude that we set before. And so as you can see, there is a lot of stuff going on in this element. Now, things like the Google Maps element has a lot to do, so it's going to be a bit more complex than your run-of-the-mill element, but what's great about this is that it just shows you exactly how much is possible to uh, cram essentially into one web component. You can make components that do a whole lot of stuff, or you can make components that do a whole little bit of stuff. 
And in fact, in the next video, we're going to be making a component that does pretty much nothing, but it's gonna be our component. So try to find some components in the catalog that you wanna check out, throw them into your document, and then just paw through them and, and see what kind of code is in there that's building up the functionality of those components. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, if you comment on the video, hit us up at Twitter or Facebook, at Level Up Tuts. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.